Okay, everybody, welcome back to Merlin Approved. I am here at the Dragon's Lair, and I am with Christina. She's been on the show several times. We love having her on the show. We could have her on the show a million times and never get tired of her. But I'm going to do something with her today that is actually something that I've never done with a gal on camera. I have never trained chest. So we're actually going to do a chest and tricep workout because as a female bodybuilder, remember, she still has to have a well-developed chest. So we're going to work on chest and triceps, and then after the show, we'll sit down for an interview. So I hope you guys learned something and enjoying the show. Thank you for watching. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do for the first exercise or exercises, we're gonna do a superset. We're gonna start off right away, hitting the chest hard, getting a huge pump. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna pre-exhaust the pecs with a flat dumbbell fly. The technique I'm gonna have Christina use is to hold a four second stretch at the bottom. Really open up the chest, very much all the way from the sternum all the way to the armpit. When she's done with those, we'll hit probably somewhere around 10 reps. I'm gonna incline the bench, and we're gonna do what I call the Merlin Close Grip Cable Incline Press, which has a, a very unique movement that with the, where you're gonna feel it if you do this movement is in the very upper inner portion of the chest. So it's very unique, but if you need that area built, give this movement a try, and I hope you guys give it a shot. Really stick up that chest nice and high when you bring them down. Get that big stretch. Four, three, two, one. Perfect. Right down. Four, three, two, one. Good. And you guys can see she has total control. Four, three, two, one. She's flying out nice and wide, holding that stretch. Four, three, to one, she comes back in the same arc that she does <clears throat> as she comes down in the negative. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Good. Good form, come on. Open it up. Four, three, two, one. Nice. Come on. Stretch, hold. Four, three, two, one. Up. Good. Two more good ones. Big stretch, hold, four, three, two, one. Good, damage those fibers, here we go. Last rep, four, three, two, one, squeeze in. Excellent, there you go. Ooh, my chest grew already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stretch under tension like that, really, ah. really builds a lot of muscle and sets up the superset to be quite painful. So watch your form closely. The benches, you can go higher or lower on this incline, but this is where I set it for today. Elbows are gonna remain close. When she comes down to the bottom, she's actually gonna flex the chest to get the chest set, ready to press. And as you can see, she's not throwing the weight to the top. She's muscling it under control using the upper chest fibers. Of course, you can't isolate those but we can go after those fibers a little bit more with a movement like this. Come on, bring it to me. Squeeze it up, come on. Squeeze it up. Good. Three more good ones, under control. Muscle it, one, come on. All chest, muscle it. Good, one more time. And press, nice, you got it. Oof. No, you can take that. Okay, before I actually discuss the second exercise, something I want to bring up about chest training in general. Make sure that when you're doing presses and flies and anything for chest, that you're setting up your torso correctly to engage the chest more than the shoulders and triceps. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to get everything you can out of the chest. So make sure when you're doing any type of press or fly, that you are actually taking the shoulders and shrugging them down and back, which will help to lift up the rib cage and also put a slight arch in the lower back. Because if you do this, this will keep the chest higher than the shoulders, so you won't end up pressing so much with the front delts and then relying on the triceps at the end of the movement. So if you do that before every single set, I promise you, even if you can't go as heavy in the beginning, eventually you will be able to, but you'll get a lot more out of every movement. So what we're doing for the second movement today is the guillotine press on the Smith machine, which is amazing for building the upper chest fibers. Of course, I always say you cannot isolate the chest, any part of the chest completely, but you can focus on certain motor unit pulls, so this will hit the upper chest. 
But what we're going to do is we're not going to do the regular presses because that would be boring and Christina <laughs> would be too easy for her. So what I like to do when I torture her is we're going to do half plus one reps. So she's actually going to come all the way down to the bottom. She's going to hit full stretch. She's going to slowly press the weight halfway, then return to the bottom, and then she's going to press all the way. And that counts as one rep. Very, very painful technique. Give it a try. There we go. Okay, guys, so you can let's see how she has self. Hmm? I said, let's do it, yeah. Okay. So you see how she has herself positioned. She has her body down, her torso down, so that the bar is going to come down right about to her clavicles. She's going to press half and then all the way to full lockout. As you can see, she's controlling every portion of the movement, muscling the weight. Good. So this is kind of giving a double stretch at the bottom. Stretch under tension is one of the best ways to excite muscle growth. It causes an automatic anabolic reaction by tearing down the muscle fibers. Excellent. Oof. to get hard. Here we go. Woo. Up. Good. Come on. Come on. Dig in now. Half. Up. Good. Still you. Let's go. 24 seasons coming. Up. One more. Half. And press. That girl. Good. Nice snap. Chest is okay, guys, uh, Christina said to me she hasn't suffered enough, so she wants to <laughs> suffer more. So Bring actually, <laughs> we're going to do um, a unilateral movement. I love unilateral training, uh, working both sides of the body separately. Uh, great for, you know, working on strength and balances and also getting a little bit more um, focus and concentration, which you do when you get one side of the body at a time. So we're going to do a unilateral chest press, but we're not doing a normal chest press. We're doing what I call a side chest press. So you'll see when Christina does this, she's going to actually sit sideways in the machine and she's going to press instead of straight out, she's going to press across her body. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on the contractions because this is a very heavy contraction movement. There's not a long range of motion. Most of the motion is in the contracted position. So we're going to hold those contractions for three seconds. We're looking to really, really build the inner chest, get those striations out for the 2024 contest season. She's going to press straight across and hold. Three, two, one. She's focusing on pushing the left pectoral into the right. Three, two, one. Good. Three, two, one. She's pushing as far across as she can. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Get a really deep oh, yeah. squeeze. Three, two, one. Come on. Squeeze. Three, two, one. Come on, bring it across. Squeeze. Three, two, one. Now it's getting difficult. Keep pressing. Squeeze across. Three, two, one. Come on. Squeeze. Three, two, one. Two more. Press and contract. Three, two, one. Last one. And big squeeze. Three, two, one. Good. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're through chest. We're starting triceps now. Uh, the first move we're going to do is an overhead tricep extension on this machine here. Great machine here at the Dragon's Lair. Of course, I'm not going to do things the normal way because that would be boring. And plus, I really, the reason why I teach these techniques to, to not only you guys, but to advanced lift, lift, lifters like Christine is because they've been training for so long and they've been doing things the standard way, their bodies sometimes become stagnant because they're used to doing it. Um, and just like anything else, the body grows tolerant. So I give them these techniques to try to spur on new growth, make the central nervous system and the muscles have to deal with something different. So what we're gonna do is a three-part set. The first five repetitions, she's gonna hold the stretch position for five, four seconds. The second five reps, she's gonna do the negative or the eccentric portion of the rep over four seconds. And then we're gonna finish the set. We're gonna go for 10 regular reps until burnout. This is a very, very intense technique. She's already done a set and was it painful? And this is gonna burn. Yes, it's it gonna burn. <laughs> Guys, give us a try at home. All those reps. Here we go. Okay. Four, three, two, one. Good. Four, three, two, one, two. Good. Four, 
three, two, one. Nice. Four, three, two, one. Four. Come on. Shh. No more stretches. Four, three, two, one. Five. Now we're going to never hold and now stop. Four, three, two, one. Press. Four, three, two, one. Press. Two, one. Press. Six, four, three, two, one. Press. Two, one. Press. Two, one. Press. Four, three, two, one. Up. Four, that's what it is. Four, three, two, one. Five. Now we go. Good. Up. Two, up. Warm up. Three. Warm up. Four. Up. Five. Five more. One. Come on, dig in. Two, dig in. Three. Come on. Up. Four. That's one. You got this. Up. Get it. Nice. That's it. Woo! Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a pump. That's a pump. Okay, guys, we're having a great time here today at the Dragon's Lair. I love training with Christina, I have to say this. I love training with you too. Because, thank you. <laughs> she's so intense, she's so, she does her movement so strictly, um, and she's such a quick learner. Like, if I tell her to change her technique just slightly, just a little bit, boom, she's right on. I love it. So, just had to say that. So, what we're doing now is we're going to do a super set for the triceps. You guys have probably seen me do this before. Uh, if you've watched the show, but I want to give these movements to Christina um, So when I'm not with her she could do this on her own So we're gonna do the first movement of the superset is gonna be an incline tricep push down So you'll see what she's gonna do. She's gonna lean her torso into the incline bench It's a very very strict movement. It takes away all torso movement whatsoever So it's even more strict it's than brutal. a regular and, and it's brutal. brutal. It's more strict than a regular standing push down because you can't use any momentum And it also changes the angle up a little bit. So again, you can hit different muscle fibers then she's going to turn around, she's going to do something that I call the Merlin Tricep Push Out, which uh, I started this movement so many years ago at Gold's Gym Venice, and now they even have machines dedicated to this movement. So I don't know if that was my fault or not, but I like <laughs> to think so. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to lower the incline a little bit. She's going to lay back on the incline. Instead of doing a push down, she's going to do a push out, but I'll let, when you, when you watch her do the movement, that you'll see the technique. This is a very brutal superset. I hope you guys give it a try. Yeah. All right, guys, so you can see. We have the bench set at about 80 degrees, maybe 85 degrees. She's keeping her elbows right by her sides. She's pushing only with the triceps. The shoulders are remaining in position. She's got her thumbs on the same side of the bar as the rest of the fingers. Which gives you a little bit more of an intense contraction. And if you're watching her triceps, you can just see how much that contraction, how far that contraction. <sighs> and she's controlling the negative. <sighs> and she's muscling down the positive. She's not throwing <sighs> it down in any way. So she's using a moderate weight <sighs> and getting a monster squeeze at the bottom. <sighs> it's not the weight that builds the muscle, it's the tension. It's creating a ton of tension. <sighs> last two, last two, and then we're gonna switch. Squeeze. One more. Finish. Come on. Squeeze. Lock it. Boom. There it is. I got it. We're going to drop the wow. weight a little bit. Woo. And now, a very unique angle, a great concentrated movement. Now, in the first set, you might not have noticed her hands are out wide. She's going to come close. So we're going to get, again, slightly different feel on the triceps. Here's elbows. good. Right there. Cut. Straight out lock. Good. So you can see she's not doing a push down, she's doing a push out. The arms are going out straight. She's locking really hard on those triceps. <clears throat> the angle of the bench and the cable allows for a really, really hard contraction. <clears throat> But Christina is even forcing the contraction harder at the bottom. She's doing what I call hyper contracting, which means she's actively flexing the muscle. Good. As you can see, her elbows remain locked in place. Her shoulders are locked in place. She's not letting any momentum take place here. Squeeze. Yep. Good. A few more for me. Come on. Squeeze. Lock. Good. Come on. Lock. Good. Let's get three. Come on. Push. One. There's the money wrap. Let's go. For growth. Squeeze. Two. Last one. 
Bring a two man squeeze, lock it, boom. Good, <laughs> I got it. Nice. Whew. They are pumped. I mean, you can see it through the black shirt. You know, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's nuts. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're going to finish off triceps now. Um, we're going to do a Merlin close grip bench press. And uh, so this is not like a normal close grip bench press. And as you can see, we're doing it on a Smith because we really want a lot of control. So instead of doing the standard style where the elbows are close to the body, you're pushing straight up, which again is a great movement. But I'm sure you guys have done it a thousand times. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to actually have Christina turn her hands in a little bit and her elbows are going to come out. What this is going to do is going to shift more emphasis to the triceps, especially the long head of the tricep, and take a lot of the chest out of the movement. So it's a little bit more a better isolation movement for the triceps. You can't quite go quite as heavy. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of an interesting range of motion. If you try this movement, play around with the grip width and also how far you come down and where you come down in your body because everybody's shoulder flexibility is a little bit different. So you gotta find where you feel comfortable, your shoulders are not compromised, so you can really, really feel the tricep push, but it's a great tricep movement for mass. And go closer. You're, you're fine, that's great, that's great. I just wanna make sure I'm far enough back. Okay. Okay guys, so watch. Uh, her elbow's gonna come outward rather than in by the body, and she's gonna push mostly here from this long head of the tricep, but really the whole tricep's gonna work. And she's also using a four second eccentric rep to really, really make sure she's gonna tense the triceps and all the way down over those four seconds, she's gonna reach full tension at the bottom and then squeeze to the top. That's it, come on. That's a good pace right there. Good. Good control. Squeeze to the top, good. She can normally go a lot heavier on this movement. Normal close grip bench press. Sure. Because of this angle, the elbow's out, and the slow and the negative, she can't go quite as heavy, but the tension is incredible. Sure. Good, come on. That's what builds muscle, tension. Woo. Push, up, sure. two more for me. Control it, don't lose that control. Here we go, press through, sure. one more. Control, 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 and squeeze the top, lock it, good, oh. you good. Nice. Wow. The pump is real, guys. <laughs> the pump is real. All right, guys, so uh, we just finished our chest and tricep workout, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, of course, I want to talk to Christina about a few different things, but being that the workout just ended, my first question is, how was it? It was phenomenal. <laughs> pump, chest pump, tricep pump. Like never before. <laughs> never before, she just said. <laughs> so it, it felt really good. Yeah. I feel accomplished. And yet we did three chest movements. Well, we did four because one was a superset. Oh, that's four right. Total. Four chest movements and... And then like we did four, four triceps. Triceps, movements. yeah. That was beautiful. I think we only really did maybe about nine work sets uh, outside the um, warm-ups. Yeah. And you were trashed, so... Trashed. So that's, that's the whole thing. That's why, you know, these techniques um, that I use, um, the time under tension is very yes. long. Yes. So, so you have to have not only the physical, but the yeah. mental capacity to last through the set, especially because we want to stay in proper form the whole time. That mental connection, for sure. I think that takes time as you, like for a beginner, it might be a little bit more difficult yeah, and to I really connect. I wouldn't give these techniques to a beginner. This is for more advanced lifters. Um, and also for people who, when I say advance, advance in terms of like where they are like yeah. as a competitor, but also if you're an older guy or an older woman who's been training for a long time and you have joint issues, isn't that, you can't really rely on heavy weights anymore yeah. to build muscle. You need to have other ways to, to facilitate muscle growth. So you now need to learn how to build tension yes. through other means. And this builds a tremendous amount of tension. This is another great way to prevent injury as well and still get, you know, the pump the work that you need as if you were lifting heavier per se. Yeah, and a lot of these techniques, especially the eccentrics and the stretch under tension, those actually damage muscle fibers to a tremendous degree. And that's our goal when we're in here is to actually damage muscle fibers. So when you damage muscle fibers, they need to be rebuilt bigger yeah. and stronger. So between that and also facilitating a huge pump into the muscle, mm -hmm. which also brings nutrients, 
oxygen, hormones, amino acids, everything into the muscle, helps to repair and facilitate that muscle growth. It allowed me to like fully mentally contract the muscle versus if I'm a little heavier, I'm powering through it a little bit more than if I was, you know, with the weight that we did today. But yeah. So we actually stay pretty modern. Right? And even a couple of times, you know, the, the ones that we filmed usually that you guys see are usually like the second set. We'll do like sort of a practice on the first one. And sometimes we go a little bit lighter because my main goal for her is to be able to feel literally every centimeter of the movement. I don't want her to think about just moving the weight yeah. from point A to point B. Yeah. I want you to feel everything. And then, of course, with time, if I continue that same movement, progressive overload. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, so we hit a lot of different angles, gave you some new movements you've never done before. Which I'll be doing again. Which she'll be doing again. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll be doing a lot oh, more workouts together. for sure. Uh, especially as you start preparing for shows. But that brings me to the next point. What yes. is the thought process on shows this year? So we are actually already phasing into like a prep mode. Ooh, okay. Yeah, um, I do longer preps. So this is like my pre-prep, I call it. Mm -hmm. Kind of getting ready for prep. I know some people do like 12 weeks, 16 weeks, whatever. I, for me, longer the you know the better. I agree with that. Yes. Um, I think last year what happened was it was still was long, but we were aiming for a show closer. So it was like gas on, gas off. This time we're just kind of easing into prep, and then as we get closer to show, which we're thinking summer. Um, Any particular event or just not? Or so. Summertime, we are thinking there's a show in Atlanta, there's Chicago, and then there's Tampa that are pretty much all back to back. So keeping that in mind, you know, just in case. <laughs> the goal is obviously to qualify in, within that first show, but now we have, you know, Chicago right after Atlanta and then Tampa, which I've always wanted to do Tampa, but it's the last show for qualification for women's bodybuilding. So when you, just to give you know, people in the audience, maybe who are competitors, an idea. When you say you're sort of going into a pre pre contest phase, mm -hmm. what's the transition? Because you're in progress yeah. season, you're in off season now. You want to? I don't like saying off season. I like saying progress season. But now, when you're in a phase into that next phase, what is it the what's the difference going to be? So diet changed a little bit, like small, small, small little tweaks. Whether it's removing the egg yolk or whatever the case may be um removing some free meals that were you mm. know allowed <laughs> um adding some cardio now back in um, i like to keep cardio year rounds but now it's now it's like um Almost scheduled. planned it's scheduled yeah. mm -hmm. so now it's like 35 for example 35 minutes five times a week before it was kind of you know just sporadic um so just getting more strict into my routine uh, slowly start to drop you know a little weight here and there and then I think by like 20 weeks we'll start to really s start moving and then moving things along and you know of course as it gets closer and closer you continue to progress, to progress. And, yeah. so what's the what's the you know what's the physique goals this year I mean I know we've discussed this before yeah. You know, last year you had the, the win in Chicago. Yes. Uh, you didn't do as well as you wanted to do in no. Rising Phoenix. No. Um, maybe weren't even as good in Rising Phoenix as you no. were in Chicago. No. Um, and, you know, there's reasons for that. And listen, it happens to everybody. But what, looking at your physique, let's, let's take the Chicago physique, which is maybe your best stage ever. From that physique, what do you want to see improvements on? Um, I'd like to be overall just a little bit more conditioned. Um, definitely glute tie-in is my goal. We've discussed that I before. want that We've glute, glute tie-in. <laughs> um, I'm actually really focused on, you know, glutes this year. Not to grow like wellness glutes, but just to really get that um, detailed. The details. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I do want to improve my chest. Still need improvement on my back. You know, just more overall density and width. Oh, we should do that next time on film. Yeah, let's ah. do back. <laughs> He said it. Um, arms, of course, you can always have, you can always keep getting the biceps, right? So I don't think I necessarily like need, need, need triceps. Um, but I think just overall, you know, keeping my arms there, because as you lean down, right, mm -hmm. they tend to shrink a little bit. I don't know, so. yours doesn't seem to shrink. <laughs> Those doesn't seem to shrink, Dave. <laughs> I remember watching her arms, training arms before her show last time. I was like, look at the size of her arms. Oh my God, and that took, my arms were not like that before. So it, it's been like a work oh, in progress. It's a process, yeah, of course. Where it was like, okay, I need to bring my arms up. 
okay, I need to bring my back up. Yeah. And now it's like they're all starting to, I'm starting to be more balanced, my physique. Mm -hmm. um, I think three, four years ago, I could have transitioned to wellness if I really wanted to. You got the leg. I mean, your legs <laughs> yes. are tremendous. That's just a strong point. Um, now it's too late, but I love, I love training upper body. So um, I think it's just overall better balance, better flow, more density in the upper body. Um, I'm in my 30s now, 32, so I feel like I'm getting into my you prime like a little bit. <laughs> 28 at most. Um, but f honestly, just better conditioning, better glute tie-in, and a little bit more fullness at the same time. So that actually, you said something that's now will bring me to my next subject. You're saying, well, I almost could have transitioned to wellness. But if you <laughs> did that, we would not have been able to witness how beautiful you pose on stage. Oh, thank you. And so you guys, if you don't know, Christina and her husband Joey have a, uh, you know, they do posing professionally. They help competitors all over the globe, online, in person here at the Dragon's Lair. But what I want to talk about is how important do you guys, because that's what you do, mm -hmm. like that's your thing. How important do you feel that posing, and I mean, the even the mandatory, the quarter turns, that is to being successful as a competitor. So successful. I honestly think mandatories is number one over everything else because that's where you're judged that's, that's where you're judged okay all that you know all the artistic stuff is beautiful and yes you get to show off you know your physique and the hard work and it's like an art form mm -hmm. but where it truly counts is prejudging which is the morning time frame of the show where you're truly being judged um and those are the mandatory poses for whatever division or category that you're in the most important are those mandatories. Um, I get this question all the time, like, when should I start? It's never, it's truly just never too early to start posing. The more comfortable you are actually posing in the off season, the more confident you're gonna be within your posing as you start to lean down. And then I always tell my people, or my clients, um, when you're posing in the off season, you can learn the fundamentals of whatever pose you're trying to achieve. And then as we get, you know, as you lean down, getting closer to your show, obviously your physique changes, meaning your poses might change here and there. But then those adjustments are going to click so much faster as you're leaning down versus starting. And then another thing I say is it's so stressful. Last thing you want to worry about four weeks out is you have no idea what you're doing with your posing. Your physique is great. You're shredded, but you can't hit your pose. And you, and you literally can be the best person you on stage really can. but can lose first I've place based it. on posing i've seen it i've seen it all the time i've also seen it in like the highest level um i'm not going to say the exact names but i've witnessed the judges even mention it in the back that they lost specifically because of the posing where they had him or her winning but after another three to four rounds i they they like to test you see how bad you want it um after those after that third fourth round it switched and that other person took the first place and the judge mentioned it in the back you faded out in your posing you know the sweat started to come down um and that that'll make a break or a placement so yes it's very important and mandatories yeah. are you, and of course you have to know how to hide weak points and bring out your strong points hide in your posing points, bring out the strong points being able to hold the poses um, transitions sports. right that's where they catch your flaws mm -hmm. you know you're transitioning you got your gut hanging out or mm -hmm. your your glute uh, you're not holding the glutes tight so you're not you holding the glutes tight yeah so things like that but yeah right. it's well, very much just quickly give everybody if that people want to contact you or Joey how do they do that um, you can contact us via Instagram and that's KJ underscore center stage okay great so anyway guys I mean unless you have any questions for Dave I'm good <laughs> So we will, it was great it training was, today. It's Love always it. great training with him. Hi, thank you so much. We'll be back. Yeah, I hope that we do. <laughs> I hope that I can contribute a lot more during your oh, prep. Oh, absolutely. Um, as we go on. And uh, we'll have Christina back. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you guys very much. So that's it here from the Dragon's Lair. We will see you next time.